So right now we have um, these classes, uh, game entities, and I intend this game entity to be the base class for other kinds of entities as well, like uh, lights and cameras. Uh, but each entity, regardless of its type, has uh, one or more components. The one component that every entity has, and it's like mandatory to have, is a transform, and then we can uh, add scripts, geometry, rigid body, etc. kind of components to it. And what I want to have for multiple selections is that I have an analogous type of entity, and that's a multi-selection entity. And it has its types of multi-selection components. For each type of component that we have, we also have a multi-selection component version of it. And likewise, this multi-select game entity can act as the base class for other types of multi-select entities. So we can have multi-select light entities and multi-select cameras. Of course, we don't have to save any of this to our project because well, it's just used by the editor, so we can handle multiple selections. So uh, regarding saving and serialization, they are simple. We don't have to do anything. What we do have to do is uh, keep track of which entities they refer to. So, for example, the multi-selection game entity will have a list of game entities that we selected. And each of those have their components, of course. So when we change any property of the multi-select game entity, it will spread those changes to all the selected entities. So the multi-select game entity has the same properties, of course, as the game entity. Uh, for example, a name and a Boolean value of if it is enabled or not. So whenever we change the name of this instance, it will distribute this change to all the selected entities. The same happens for the components. Each multi-select component uh, refers to each of these components of the selected entities. So for example, the multi-select transform refers to all the transform components and each property that we set or change in multi-select transform is propagated to all the selected transform component. So all we have to do now is for each kind of entity and component have the uh, analogous multi-selected uh, version, multi-selection version of it. And that's what I want to start working on today. Okay, going to my drawing here, it depicts the way we implemented the entities and components in the editor, which is the object-oriented uh, way of implementing it. So uh, here we have a list of entities and each entity has a list of components. So for example, this one, the first one has a transform, which all entities have to have. So that one is in all entities. And it has a geometry component. Um, same as the second entity. But the third entity has only a transform and a script. And uh, this one, the middle one, has all four of these entities. Well, of course, there are probably going to be uh, uh, more kinds of components uh, than these four, but this is just for the illustration purposes, for the explanation. Uh, and the way we uh, retrieve any information about these components is that we just go through the list and see if it has a component of this type. For example, if you're looking for a, a geometry component in uh, an entity, then we go through its component list and check if it has a geometry component. And if not, then we return no. It works fine as long as you are not going to do a lot of calculations on thousands of entities. Every frame of your game, like in the editor, of course, we don't do that. We just do it whenever I select an entity and it's retrieved once 
and that's basically it. But in the game engine, uh, we have to process a lot of these uh, this information uh, every frame. So that means at least thirty or sixty uh, times per second for possibly hundreds or thousands of entities. And that kind of just makes your CPU very sad because CPU is just sitting there waiting for the for all these memory fetches to come in and do something with one of them and then wait again for the next piece of information and then yeah it kind of gets boring for the CPU this way very fast. The way I'm going to implement these entities and their components in the engine is uh, a bit more data oriented. Um, so uh, I'm going to use indices instead of instances. So I'll have an array, for example, for the transform component. I'll have an array for that in a separate file that has all the positions and orientations and skills in the same array. And then I just have an index to that array in my entity list. So that means that uh, these indices, by the way, start at zero. So it, well, to be more precise, but here they start at one, one, two, three, four. Uh, that means that whenever we have an entity that doesn't have a particular component, that we then use one of those invalid indices to indicate that this entity doesn't have that component. And the way we can look up components is then very easy. Uh, we just know that for uh, every component, there is an entry in the list of components for entities. So for example, for geometry, we know that its index is in the third slot. One, two, three. And if this third slot is minus one, that means that the entity doesn't have a geometry component. So uh, these are also all 32-bit unsigned integers. And yeah, this is a bit, or actually quite faster to process than the object-oriented uh, method. But there's still room for improvement. Uh, right now, if we would implement it like this, then we would have a list of components like transform and then script ID and then geometry ID and rigid body. And then we would repeat that in the next entity. So that, then the transform IDs would be alternated by three other indices or at least three other indices. And that introduces a lot of cache misses as well. So to make a further improvement, I would do the following. Uh, here was the first idea of data-oriented design. And I could do the same, but then give each kind of in each type of index their own array. So if I am only looking for geometry IDs, I can just go through this array of uh, geometries and without involving any other uh, element in between two indices. So that would be even faster. And yeah, that's how I'm going to uh, implement uh, the entity and and components here and the entity basically is just a list of indices now it's not a, even a class or anything like that and that makes your cpu go super saiyan and before i start implementing the entity and components i would like to explain something more about the indices that i'm going to use imagine that we have this list of entities entity information in some kind of array and and each slot has an index. So here in the second slot, we have entity number two. It's sitting here being happy. And there is an object somewhere in our game engine or in the game code that refers to this 
uh, element. But at some point, we are going to delete this entity and uh, later on, we'll add another entity that will sit in the same slot because we are, of course, reusing these slots to save space on the memory. And now this reference to this entity isn't valid anymore because if this object would ask for the information of this entity, it will get the information from the new entity and not the old one. So it will have, uh, for example, if you would ask for an for a geometry component, it will it would get the geometry of the new entity, which could be a mountain instead of an apple, uh, which would have been the the old entity. So that's a problem. And to solve this, I'm going to slice each index into two parts, a small part of it, for example, eight bits of it, or maybe 10 bits, depending on how often we are going to uh, remove and add new entities. That part I'm going to use as a generation part, and the rest of the index is the index into this array. And each time we put another entity here, I'll just increment the generation. So for example, for this new entity, I'll have the generation one because it was zero first. And now it's a new generation. And if you would remove this one and add another one, then the generation would become two. But the index would uh, stay the same because it's still in the second uh, in the second slot of the array, right? This way, if we now, if our object would request information about uh, about the entity in this uh, index, then we could compare their generations to each other and determine if uh, we are talking about the same entity. Now, because of this mismatch, we can infer that this uh, object has an old has a reference to an old entity, and we can tell it that it doesn't exist anymore, and then it can handle that case. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is the first thing I'm going to write because the indices are uh, rather important in the entity component system that I'm going to implement. And it is basically uh, roughly based on uh, something I read a long time ago in a block of Stingray. Uh, engine and let's see um, they are talking about this uh, index bits and index mask and generation bits etc so the way I'm going to implement this uh, index system is roughly based on their blog I'll uh, include a link to this one in the description of the video so you can read it yourself actually there is a lot of very useful, interesting articles in this blog that could be really interesting to anyone who wants to learn more about game engine programming, like me. Because this generation, if it's at 8 bit, that means that if we would do this removing and addition of new entities like. 255 times, then this would wrap around and become zero again. And then in that case, if at that moment someone would ask for this index of 0, 0, 0, 0002, then they would still get an invalid or the wrong entity. So that's extremely unlikely to happen. But if you are not comfortable with that, you could use more than eight bits. And uh, for example, if you would use t uh, 10 bits, then th uh, this uh, chance of a bug happening would happen every uh, 1024 uh, refreshments of this slot. If uh, you understand what I mean, I hope. Um, 
So yeah, that's why I want to make that configurable as well.